Hello there, everybody, and welcome to the very first episode of a new world, a new saga, a new series for Dwarf Fortress of mine. This is going to be a long playlist filled with many fortresses that we're going to play alongside with the story of the Banner of Shadow, a dying civilization in a world filled with mega beasts, a very high mineral scarcity, and, well, as you see there, there's really not much dwarfiness going on in this world, and our goal for this series will be to change that. This is also going to be a roleplay series. That means I'm going to take a uh, focus into weaving a story into all that. For example, our first season, the one that we're just starting out, we're going to have to find a spot for our civilization to rebuild at, where we're not under constant pressure of the goblin hordes here that have pretty much destroyed all of the progress of the civilization. So, season one will be building up a fort that is going to be safe and is going to be producing all the things that we need to rebuild our civilization in the next season, maybe. Or, well, I don't know if it's season two or season three or season four, but I definitely will also build a croptopia of sorts where our goal will be to have a lot of food production and all the things that we require for that so to role play the granary of the empire feel free to drop me in the comment section whatever you feel like would be in good addition to the series a good fortress idea a good chapter for the story and i'm all ears to see what i can do here as this world is quite exciting we are going to start out our uh, story here is to, at this little dwarven fort and the idea is that our friends here from the banner of shadow will flee south far far away from these goblins but they won't be going into the lush and green hills here as they are afraid the enemy will spot them there because you know good land for being attacked and all Instead, we're going to flee back into the rocky wastes of this area here, where we can find ubiquitous amounts of different metals, and we can build ourselves a proper fortress. I voted myself against these green hills here, because roleplay-wise, I see two things. First off, this is not a very dwarvy environment, and like I said, if, the, uh, if you are xenophobic, you would be assuming to be found in a lush and welcoming environment. Whereas down here, well, this is uh, this is not exactly the, uh, the best of uh, environments. So over here, we have a very, very interesting area where we will be starting out our adventure. It is an untamed wilds area that offers silver, copper and iron and story-wise, the historians of our of our uh, kind, we knew of this place. I mean, I want to show you one thing, speaking about mineral scarcity. We have here the filter on spots with iron on the world, and uh, you will notice quite quickly that there aren't too many places with iron here in this world. I am voting against these areas here, because in a roleplay, uh, why, um, why is point of view these are very far away and our starting caravan is already um, pushed to the uh, limits hard enough by going all the way down here but to me personally it does make sense that they will try to hide away at a very hostile place to rebuild a fortress that will fend off everything and rebuild anew as the these lands up here they are quite forsaken to our kind I mean our home fortress because I'm pretty sure that this thing up here this goblin fort is actually our home fort I'm pretty sure that this is the home spot of our civ and therefore this is also we want to uh, free this place if possible we want to retake this if not possible we want to destroy everything uh, goblin uh, wise around there this is one of the uh, big goals of the series if you have good ideas like I said again comment section I'm all ears you guys get the opportunity to write this story with me if you are early enough with me on this ride of course now this is one of the spots where there is iron and as you see there on this half of the map there is not too much going on so iron in combination with flux 
is just the stuff that civilizations are built on. And I felt like if we can just take silver and copper for grabs by just going here right there next door, yeah, that's where I was sold. And this is where we will embark on our first adventure together. So this is going to be a really, really nice little fort. And we get the warning that we are living in a savage area. This is also something where I feel like, yeah, that makes gameplay wise to me a lot of sense as we are going to go where nobody really wants to go. I really, really like that as a, uh, in a from a uh, point of view of storytelling. So I'm going to reuse the um, profile that I had on my uh, Savage Lands saga here. It's a pretty nice setup where we got a couple of miners, a woodcutter, weaponsmith and armorer and planter. This works out quite decently well. So I'm going to go now over a couple of things how we're going to roll with the series. I will use the starting squad and the first 20 dwarves as the main cast of this uh, fort. We're going to introduce them and we're going to mark them across the series with a... Uh, system that I still haven't uh, fully thought through, but uh, something like, I don't know, an asterisk or something in front of their names. So they will be always uh, visible as the founders. These will also be influencing the story by their deeds. And uh, here again, the dear audience is invited to provide cool things that make the story more lively. So in the background, I will now quickly fetch up a fortress name and I'll be back in a hot second. And here we go. So, Sandwalls, the Armored Heart, for our new fortress and the group founding it will be the Lone Anvil, as these guys will be setting out with almost nothing except for some high hopes and an anvil. So we won't be having much to begin with, but this place should provide for us all. So uh, embark preparations were not completed. No petrified wood was available. Yeah, all right. That is okay. I'm not uh, cheesing this here now. Yeah, 15 points remain. It is okay. So Sandwalls greets us. Now, let's check the topography. It is flat. Flat like a plate. All right, so on the bright side, this means we got all the things we need to build a proper fortress that does not need to care about the uh, topography here. Also, as we see, this place is way less hostile than I anticipated. There's even some stuff growing here on the ground. Excellent. So we shall lose no time. But before we get started with anything, let's take a look at our first man. And this is going to be the first dwarf that will be introduced here. So let's see. Can I? So I would need to retype his uh, name. All right. We're going to make it like this. Oh, come on, game. So this is really retro. So, Bool Dyke Reigns. So I really think this will stand out enough. So let's see what kind of a expedition leader we have picked up. He is always in love with somebody and easily develops positive feelings. All right. He's very greedy. He's very trusting. He doesn't cling tightly to ideas and is open to changing his mind. Now that's a positive train of thought. He often feels discouraged. Oh, <laughs> he generally finds himself quite hopeful about the future. Now what? Discouraged or hopeful? He's pleased by his own appearance and talents. He tends to consider what others think of him. He tends not to be swayed by emotional appeals. He likes to take it easy and he's quick to form negative views about things, and he's very humble. He often greets others with a hug. Uh, he lowers his eyes when he's annoyed, and when he gets excited, it's easy to tell because he drums his fingers. Welcome, Bubul Dagrains. Well, what an interesting character. He's a bit of a mixed bag. Well, we are going to start picking up our picks 
as you see there, we have already assigned a couple of people here. And uh, the first thing that I want to do is I want to go downstairs and uh, get me some safety going and set up a room where we can hide in and let's dig downstairs 10 levels. I held down left shift while doing so. So first things first, let's do a meeting area. And to everybody who wants to support this channel, there are several ways down there in the description box. And I also started doing a channel membership thing as I'm uploading these episodes back to back. And uh, I did it make it so that channel members get to preview these things early, but only scheduled things for the release. Never ever paywalled content on my content on my channel because I, I strongly believe in free for all things. But you know, if you want to support, it's just uh, as much as you want to give, can give, and you can binge the stuff that I pre upload because I tend to have Dwarf Fortress pre uploaded a plenty. But apart from that, one episode a day for everybody who wants to stay patient. Temples. A god of depravity. <laughs> Lish gnarled zeal. All right. No worshippers yet. Oges West Tunnel. Trade. Twilight. Dusk. Wow. The Banner of Shadow is fully living up to its name. Erdem Mountains. All right. Momus. The Ashen Burial. Death. Momus. That was the name of the queen of my previous series. It was a worshipper of a death god. Jeez. Covest Foggy Saffron, Fortresses and Plants, Dishmop, now that's a lot of things, Jewels, Youth, Birth, Children, Pregnancy, Marriage, Oaths, so she's the uh, Family and Jewels God, I think she's a, I don't know, maybe it's a man, Raal, Earth, and Doran Jade Guild of Wealth, sheesh, what a pantheon, I like it already, <laughs> All right, we keep this a meeting area, and uh, we already have struck aquiferous rock. Yeah, well, that had to be expected. So we are going to go for this spot here, dig it out, and let's set up a base camp first. So we don't need much to get started with or civilization. We just need a still, a kitchen, and by, while we're at it, we are going to get these here in the standard orders. So don't collect webs and kill yourself while doing so. Stop claiming dead and killing yourself while doing so. And stop nabbing the XP from my planter. Thank you. So the goal of this uh, series will also be to establish of course, the characters in the series and their motivations. I really will do my best to roleplay them accordingly and form a story that is not only playing alongside of my book, but is also being influenced by the events here because Dwarf Fortress does a hell of a job in, in providing situations like these. Okay, I think we are quite well off for the start, the Butcher and the Tenor round of the assortment. And then we have pretty much everything we need. And a little bit more than that even. All right, so I'm digging out a little bit more of that area. So let's get started. We're going to have a stockpile for them seeds. A stockpile for them. Oh, wait a sec. Wow, that deletes it? Today I learned. I didn't even know. I thought I'd be creating another stockpile zone around that one neatly and tidily. Because here it works. That's what I wanted to do. Not important. So we're going to designate this one to the rest of the food stuff. Except for the seed and except for the drink. As I like to store my drink in a uh, really generous stockpile on its own. 
as dwarves need far more drink than any other foodstuff. There we go. Then, we are going to set up a couple of fields. Some farm plots to begin with. Not too much. But also, something that we can work with. All right, let's pause it for a second. Plump helmet all year, if possible. For one of them, because, you know, can't have too much plump helmet. Then, a mixture of sweet pod and pigtail. And some plump helmet. And here we go for a bit of quarry bush. Here again, pigtail. And plump helmet. And again, some sweet pods, more pigtail. I want to go for a cave weed later, but not yet. So I think something like that will keep my planter busy for the time being. And now we're going to set off and kill some trees. There's one right next to my wagon, though that highwood tree has go is going to die. Bull will take him down. Whack. All right. So that'll get us uh, to the point where we can now set up a carpenter's workshop. And make us some wooden blocks to breach that uh, aquifer properly. Because there's a high tendency of us not getting the luxury of... Uh, reaching through a rocky layer. I don't think we are we are going to get that lucky. So, the entrance area of the fort is something that we can relocate as we see it fit. But um, stairwells are quite quickly a logistical uh, choke point. So let's make it like that. This way I can widen it if I need to. So the exciting part about uh, sand walls will be the fact that there is literally no... Um, no, wait a sec, I want to do this differently. There's literally no limit to my imagination how I want to build this thing on the surface as there's really no topography that I need to respect or play around. Nothing. Nah. We can't really go crazy on that one. It's uh, very exciting in that regard. So, yeah, high wood blocks are recognized. So, I'm blocking it up right away, as it is uh, just better to have this uh, problem resolved before it starts leaking. What I really ap appreciate about this environment already is that we got a natural access to foodstuff on the surface that's really it really really comfy we uh we got a uh, pretty uh, pretty generous start in that regard on the other hand though we uh yeah we have that kind of uh aquifer that you need to build through which is always in my book, the most annoying type of it. I mean, it's easily resolvable. I mean, in this scenario, we were easy, very easily... Uh... Whoa, 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 stop that. Um, we were very lucky in terms of uh, getting trees on the surface. Without trees, we would have needed to dig down and... Uh... Oh, jeez. Stop following my old orders, please, thank you. Yeah, then we would have had to dig deeper until we hit uh, the rocky area here. So, mudstone. Mudstone is the stuff that we get to work with first. Brilliant. So let's open up another chamber. And 
from that point on, we are going to go downstairs 10 levels. Held the left shift button while scrolling down. And we found our first gemstone, Claropol. Nice. Now that is really, really delightful. Always am happy. So mod-wise, by the way, I put the uh, you will find all the mods that I use in the description box below. Among these, Keteros mods, uh, Keteros stones for more interesting looking stones. They resemble the na natural look of the uh, stones, which I personally find totally cool. All right, so that means we can now set up proper shop properly here. So let's get the stone worker down. The crafts dwarf. The mechanic. And I'd say the carpenter moves downstairs as well, I think. It's uh it was okay to set it up upstairs, but uh now I think we pre we we benefit from doing it for now like that. Okay, so small stockpile here for furniture things. And let's see what our excavators uncover. So we found limestone. Brilliant. One of the first things that I want to achieve here is to breach into the caverns as quick as possible. So we go downstairs 10 more levels. That is uh, my first and foremost interest as the caverns will make everything a lot more accessible and lively here. <laughs> One of our dudes is extremely happy. Obul is extremely happy. Look at that. So, there's claystone. We're excited to see where uh, there's siltstone. Where does it take us? So we are not finding any uh, anything uh, spectacular so far. Probably have uh, hit one of those locations where you don't where you dig past the caverns, or it is an extremely deep caverns. We don't know. So here's dolomite. Ah, there's a wonderful mixture of stone available here. Oh, quartzite. Quartzite is one of the most wonderful looking uh, magma proof stones. Alrighty. It's always the most exciting thing to me to, to unbox the uh, layers. Here we found magnetite. Hell yeah. We haven't found any fuel so far. Let's go downstairs 10 more levels. Now that comes unexpected. Err, uh, go on, adults. So, I really kind of wonder what we, uh, gotten ourselves into. All right, and why is that so freaking loud? I'm, uh, I'm very sorry about that. I hope this wasn't as loud to you as it was to me. So, um, minus 34. So we, we hit rock bottom. <laughs> what we did. We hit rock bottom. Okay. This will be an interesting run. I am I am dumbfounded. I I haven't seen something like that ever before. All right, it's going to be the most shallow fortress ever. But I mean, we seem to have everything we need, but that does bring me to the question, where are the remaining caverns? As this was surely not all. Okay. So, we are going to get ourselves a throne made. 
while our expeditionary force is still digesting the shock. I mean, that is, uh, you know, this whole map is only 50 stories deep. I was playing the last time a map where I was digging out a pump stack that was alone 160 stories high. <laughs> so yeah, obviously Sand Walls is an entirely different place and this is an entirely different world. Well, I'm really happy about this. Let's see if we can't find a... a uh, entry point to the tier 1 caverns while we're building ourselves a office for our esteemed expedition leader. I mean, we could, of course, make this all without um, without an entirely own room, but uh, like I said, this is a roleplay run and we are after making it uh, nice and realistic. So... Another aquifer. That came extremely unexpected. So this place is full of surprises. I really didn't uh, expect anything of the things that have happened so far. And this is already a hell of an exciting journey. So, let's see. We're going to make rock blocks out of what? So... Let's start out with a couple of gabbro blocks as this will very, very likely be a stone that we got plenty of available. Because it is darn time to set up a proper infrastructure, we need to get a manager going and we need to set up our food production. We need to chop some more trees to get some beds together. So there's, there's plenty to do. We really need to get going here. Our animals are starting to grow hungry, so we're going to pasture them outside. There's plenty of food to go around for them critters, so we will take the risk of having them outside. There we go. Alright, the office is in place, and let's set up our manager. Datan, the planter, will be our manager. There we go. So, with that, let's set up the uh, infrastructure for our booze production real quick. Brew drink, make rock pots, and cook meals. Uh, so that is the basics. Let's make process plants to another duty and process plants to bags. So now we have all the things that we require. Let's set up all of these to a uh, grand total of 2000 drinks to be made in a grand total. Maybe we will amp up that number one day soon, but not as of yet. So our Rock pots will be made out of any material that will fall into our hands. I am not going to be too specific disregard. We are going to make the lavish meals until we got 200 of them. And the plant processing will be done whenever it is possible. Okay, so this way we now have set up everything that we need to process the goods on the fields into drink and food. We can also harvest things from the surface and this will get us somewhere to begin with. All right, so yeah, that is uh, quite that, that is quite the journey. We will now have to dig our way through, as it seems, another layer of aquifer. We will have to search for the... Um, for the caverns. This is one hell of an adventure that I haven't foreseen and in episode one we have already gleaned adamantine. That is uh, what's really amazing about this. So this place is either cursed or blessed. 
it is uh, all a question of your point of view, but uh, the story of the Banner of Shadow has just begun. So, here ends episode one. I am very, very happy that you tuned in, and I hope you will stay with me for the rest of the series. You can drop me your comments down below. I'm all ears to hear from you, and feel free to leave a thumbs up, consider subscribing, it's all nice to support the channel in this way as it makes the videos more popular to the algorithm and the subscriptions they help more than you think. In the description box you will find a playlist link to the previous uh, Savage Lands saga. So there's 200 episodes of Dwarf available there. So you might want to knock yourself out there. And as I said before, there is also links to Discord. There's uh, or no, I didn't say that before. There's a link to my Discord, so you can hang out there and uh, chill with other Dwarf Fortress gamers. And there's also my Twitch, where I stream each Sunday evening in the uh, Friday and uh, Sundays. And also there's Patreon, Paypal, and Buy Me A Coffee, which are the preferred ways and means of supporting this channel. And of course, I mentioned it already, the channel membership thing is relatively new. And if you'd like to binge watch Dwarf Fortress, I kind of wholeheartedly recommend. I really tend to upload a couple of, uh, a couple of these before they get aired. But like I said, apart from that, I'll do all I can to provide your daily dose of, do uh, of dwarf. And I hope you'll be coming back. And I hope we're going to have some good times here with Sandwalls and the Banner of Shadow. See you all on the next one. Bye bye.